Revolutionary thinking. What if I told you we could turn off that gene to cause that lump to grow, or make more insulin when we need it? What if I told you this was entirely possible? What if I told you we could solve countless health and environmental problems economically with what nature has already given us? To manipulate the way how genes are expressed, we can take our bodies off autopilot for a second when things start to go wrong. So to control the expression of genes, we must first understand what epigenetics is. It is the changes in the phenotype without the change in the genotype. In short, your genetic code or sequence of bases is not changed, but the way that it expressed is. You can imagine your genome as the workers of the whole system, while your epigenome is the boss telling the workers what to do. Or you can imagine the DNA as the hardware of the system, while the epigenome is the software telling the hardware how and when to operate. Methylation is one of the ways that we can induce epigenetic changes which acts as a switch, turning genes on and off. Whereas histones and histone modification acts as a knob, dampening or boosting translational factors. Methylation involves our nifty little friends, enzymes, or DNA methyltransferases. And these have specific amino acid structures that uh, chemically interact with the DNA to bind if they are chemically composed to match the DNA's own chemical composition. So when we methylate DNA, we change the base's chemical composition that transcriptional factors cannot recognize or bond to the DNA. Thus, RNA is not made and translation doesn't occur. Histones are proteins that the DNA winds itself around. When the DNA is tightened and wound quite tightly, the uh, expression is not as much going through versus the looser expression where the expression is more. And I brought a little visual aid to explain how this happens. So you guys in the front here are going to be the uh, transcriptional factors like DNA polymerase. And this here is my chromatin, while the pink bit is the gene of interest. If I tighten it, you can't really see the gene of interest. But when I loosen it, you can. This works the same way as DNA with open and closed DNA, that the transcriptional factors can access this DNA more so than when it's twisted. So we can induce this histone modification through a process called acetylation that effectively changes the way that we have forces of the DNA binding to the histones. So when the forces are more, it's tightened, and when the forces are less, it's loosened. Ah, yes, CRISPR, our favorite little genetic tool. CRISPR uses RNA, uh, sgRNA as the uh, driver of the car, while they use DCAS9 endonuclease as the car itself, which transports transcriptional factors. The beauty of uh, CRISPR is that we can attach any enzyme inducing methylation or acetylation. So epigenetics can do wonders. It can benefit any kind of biological implication that we have, whether it's an overaccumulation or it's a deficiency. We can treat things like insulin regulation, HIV, Huntington's, but even in cancers. We can boost the transcription of tumor suppressor genes while inhibiting oncogenes. Other conventional uses like radiotherapy or chemotherapy blast cells with bad energy that causes narcosis, which isn't good for your nearby healthy cells, versus epigenetics, which we can minimize these kind of bad effects. We can also improve the environment economically and sustainably. We can multiply our crop's produce tenfold through epigenetics by boosting the transcription of uh, edible proteins. By doing so, we can reduce how much we actually need versus the output. So we reduce land mass and pollution from fertilizers and uh, habitat deconstruction by getting more. Furthermore, by taking care of less plants, would you rather take care of five plants having the same output as 10? we could reduce our expenditure overall while maximizing the profit. So this brings me to the implications versus the benefits. The concept of epigenetics can do wonders, but the execution is quite hard to get correct. The benefits uh, mainly stem from being the, the other gene therapies have implications that can also go wrong, as you can see on the right here, but our epigenetic therapies do not uh, experience these. 
Also, since it's so targeted, we can, with pinpoint accuracy, uh, achieve the same results with minimal side effects. Lastly, it is heritable. This means that we're not only improving our plants and our health for the f our generation, but our future's generation and their future's generation. We could almost build a sort of immunity over time, and this will save us hundreds of dollars in medical bills in the future. So the main implications obviously stem from our limited knowledge in the area. Unfortunately, we don't know a lot about it still, and we don't know, we know in environment impacts the epigenome, but we don't know how this is. Furthermore, if we had an accurately mapped genome, we could be holding the manual to every biological implication, every issue that we've had, but unfortunately, we still don't have this. A lot of our research is inconclusive and always draws variances. Lastly, and unfortunately for us, it's quite expensive at the moment. In the short term, it can cost millions, but in the long term, we can build up the species immunity and save hundreds of millions of dollars in the future. We have the epigenome and our genetics. We have the blueprint, but now we have the tools to design the future we see fit. Thank you. <laughs>